Welcome back. My next guest is Dr. Grayson Peterson Fitz, who is with Bluegrass Orthopedics, and one of your specialties is spine. And, and I started out with, quote, slip disc. What is a slip disc? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, Dr. Fox. Uh, a slip disc has many definitions, okay, and it's one of the most common things that I see, and it contributes a lot to patients' neck, mid-back, or low-back pain. And when I hear a patient coming to me with, I have a slip disc, it means we have a little bit of homework to do. And sometimes that homework is a very detailed physical exam where I test all their nerves from their neck down to their low back, and I review their imaging with them, which is typically a series of x-rays that I interpret, and they may even need an MRI to look at things a bit further. Now, you look at the disc, but is the slip disc the same as a herniated disc, or explain what the disc does. Sure, so we're all born with discs in our spine from the top of our neck down to our low back, and over time they can degenerate, and what that means is they just aren't quite as pliable. The discs are in there as kind of like shock absorbers. They're designed to pad the bones between our spine, and in a way they do provide some space to protect the nerves. If they slip or degenerate, they can in fact bulge out or even herniate out into the spinal canal, and that can pinch a nerve or cause severe back pain or pain down the arms or legs. Now you, you mentioned pain as the symptoms. Is that is that the only symptom or what, what are some things that think, oh man, I might have some disc trouble? Sure. Sometimes if you just have an unusual sort of presentation of weakness in the arms or the legs or kind of using your hands or perhaps your feet aren't working quite how you want them to, that can actually portend kind of a, a problem with one of the discs either in your neck or your low back. And sometimes too, some numbness and tingling, saying like, it kind of feels like my fingers are asleep. You know, I woke up and I tried to shake them loose and I couldn't quite get it, get it taken care of. It may in fact be the nerves being irritated in the neck by a herniated disc. Is there something that says, oh man, I need to see the doctor? Is there warning signs or red flags? Absolutely, I think like with any condition, the biggest red flags for me are severe sudden onset of weakness that you didn't have before. If let's say you have a, maybe you have a slip and a fall, or maybe you're involved in a car accident, something like that, and all of a sudden you have a new weakness that you can't explain otherwise, you probably need to get evaluated pretty quickly. The biggest red flag symptom that I think I can tell people is, if you have any change in sort of your day-to-day -day functions like bowel or bladder function, you need to see a spine doc sort of immediately. So once they see you, what, what's some treatments? What, uh, you make the diagnosis, does, does everybody have to have surgery? Very few people go on to need surgery for this, which I think is one of the best news that I can give people when I first see them. I say, okay, we have a problem in front of us, but good news, we're not gonna rush off to the operating room. Most often, this can get better with a course of non-operative treatments, which may look like using some medications for a short period of time. Almost invariably, we do a course of physical therapy, focusing on things like core strengthening, working on the front, because I was always taught a key to a good back is a good front. So we make sure all those stabilizers are in good shape. And there are types of injections we can give in the spine, an epidural steroid injection, or even selective nerve root injections. They can provide a great deal of relief and get people back on their feet. All that fails though, you, some people do need to be operated on and that's one of your specialties. Yes, sir. Tell me about the surgeries you do. Sure, so one of the more common surgeries I do is in the lumbar spine because the, the lumbar spine is a very mobile area so those discs can herniate into the canal and we do what's called a microdiscectomy. It's done through a very small incision. Uh, we basically remove a, as little bone as we have to in order to access the disc safely. We remove the piece of the herniated disc that's pinching on a nerve. We leave the remainder of the healthy tissue there. And it's an outpatient surgery. Patients are able to go home the same day and almost invariably they call, call later that day and say, I, I feel so much better already. Okay, so what can the people do quickly before they end up at the doctor? Is there anything to do to prevent getting a disc? That's probably the most important question I can answer for new patients and something I get asked every day. Number one most important thing you can do is maintain a healthy, active lifestyle. And what that looks like is just staying on your feet. Sedentary lifestyles actually contributes to these discs wearing out more frequently. Uh, something like smoking is really bad for the disc. It actually dehydrates them and leads to more disc herniations. Uh, things like really uh, safe lifting habits. If you do work in a sort of labor intensive job, bending from the knees rather than hinging and torquing at the back is a big, uh, big contributor to these sort of things. So really being cognizant of maintaining good posture, uh, eating healthy, staying active, and avoiding smoking are really the biggest things I tell people. 
That's great information. We appreciate all the work you do. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dr. Fox. And if you've got back pain that won't go away or symptoms of numbness and tingling and weakness, make sure you see your primary care or orthopedic surgeon. We'll be right back.